The way police works in the United States. Wait, what's that? We're getting pulled over in the middle of a video? You've got to be kidding me. I can't really see the car. Is it a state trooper? Maybe it's a county sheriff. Wait, could it be a federal agent? I know we've made some videos on the FBI. Wait, I got it. That gives us an excellent idea. Why are there so many different police departments? Everyone's familiar with the police. No matter where you are or where you've been, you've likely seen some sort of police presence. But police is a catch-all term here, as there are various levels of law enforcement throughout the United States. They can range from federal, state, county, city, town, you name it. But what's the point? Why are there so many different types of police? What do they do differently? We're here to explain all of that for you. We'll be giving you a breakdown of federal, state, and local police. We'll be grouping together county, city, and town police as local police for simplicity's sake. If you have no clue what any of these are, let's give you some examples. For federal law enforcement, there's agencies like the FBI, DEA, US Marshals, Border Patrol, Secret Service, and the ATF. For state, there's agencies like the California, Texas, and Florida Highway Patrols, New York State Police, Alaska State Troopers, and the Kentucky State Police. You can find these in 49 states. Fun fact, Hawaii is the only state without a statewide police force. And lastly, for the local police, some examples are the NYPD, LAPD, and Chicago PD, and then the Los Angeles Sheriffs, Las Vegas Metropolitan, and Broward County Police Departments. This is barely scratching the surface. There are thousands and thousands more. Sorry, mall cops, you didn't make the cut this time. Now that you're familiar with some of these departments, let's kick things off with a fun example on how jurisdiction works. For you cops and lawyers out there, don't fret. This is going to be a simple explanation of jurisdiction. You just robbed a bank in the little town of Nowhere, Kentucky, and various types of police are hot on your tail. You must have taken a lot of money. You just made it out of the town. Now the town cops have to back off. Now you just pass through Naja City, and the city cops have to back off. Then you make it out of Tinnitus County. Woo! That was close. The county police back off. Now you gotta make it out of Kentucky, which you successfully do. Luck is definitely on your side. The Kentucky State Police back off. Uh-oh, now you have the feds on your trail because you cross state lines. You're gonna have to make a break for it to Canada or Mexico if you even want a shot at your freedom. You're now on the FBI's most wanted list. Congratulations. Now while that was fun to show you, it doesn't work that simply. This isn't Grand Theft Auto where you can hide in a bush and the cops forget about you 30 seconds later. Likely, if you robbed the bank, an APB would be put out on your location and the town or city county, and even state police will get involved almost immediately. On top of that, if you cross state lines, you've now involved the federal government. See how quickly this can stack against you? And it's not like the police would just stop pursuing you because you went outside their jurisdiction. Once an officer sees you commit a violation within their jurisdiction, the jurisdiction becomes irrelevant. They can chase you as far as necessary, something called fresh pursuit. A local cop may be limited by his department's own policy on how far he can chase you, but for all intents and purposes, it doesn't matter. Don't think that the town cops will see a sign for the next town and just give up. With that out of the way, before we can get into their similarities and differences, we must start by explaining the main purpose of each of these three levels of law enforcement. Let's start off with the big guns, the federal police. Federal police are usually referred to as agents, not police. The feds enforce the federal law of the United States. The feds are overseen by the Department of Justice or Department of Homeland Security. As you probably figured, federal law enforcement is the biggest entity out of the three levels we will be discussing. Federal law enforcement comes in several different forms, with 65 federal agencies and 27 offices of Inspector General that employ full-time personnel authorized to make arrests and carry firearms. With a body of that size, they also get the most funding. The DOJ and DHS's budget combined for fiscal year 2022 is around $126.1 billion. Now compare that to the largest state agency's budget, the California Highway Patrol, which is around $2.9 billion. That's a huge difference. Federal agencies enforce federal law, not state law. An example of this is with the legalization of marijuana. While it may be legal in certain states, a federal agent can still arrest you for the possession of marijuana because it is not legal under federal law. So you can be following the law in your state, but still be breaking the law to the federal government of the United States. Now on to state police. 
While we're using the term state police, in reality only 23 states call their departments by that name. Some states use terms like highway patrol, state highway patrol, state patrol, and state troopers. Despite the different names, the functions of these agencies are usually the same. And to get things a little more complicated for you, Alaska and Arkansas are the only states with both a highway patrol and state police. Regardless of the title, state police all have one thing in common. They enforce their respective state's law. The Vermont police aren't interested in enforcing the law over in Nebraska, and vice versa. For example, you're not going to see a South Carolina Highway Patrol officer traveling to Colorado to arrest someone for smoking marijuana in Colorado, despite that being illegal in South Carolina. They simply don't have the jurisdiction to enforce that. State police typically deal with patrolling highways and dealing with traffic. However, they respond and deal with all sorts of scenarios and crimes, especially in rural areas where there isn't much local police patrolling. This is especially the case in Alaska, where the Alaska State Police can be the only police for hundreds, even thousands of square miles. Alaska doesn't have any counties, it has boroughs. And to leave you with a fun fact before we move on to local police, State Police can trace its roots all the way back to the Texas Rangers, which were the first statewide police force in the United States. And now on to the local police. To remind you, by local we mean county, city, or town. County police are typically referred to as sheriff's departments. City police are typically called municipal police. And town police are the smallest of the bunch, usually in the suburbs of major cities or towns that can afford to have its own police department. Each of these departments enforce the laws of the United States, their respective state laws, and their respective ordinances, such as county, city, and town laws. While we're mentioning local police, not every locality has its own police department. There are entire counties and areas that don't have their own police force. If a county doesn't have a police force, the state police steps in. If a town doesn't have a police force, the county or state police can step in. So wherever there are gaps, the state police and county police, if applicable, fill those gaps. Just because local police departments have a smaller jurisdiction by no means implicates its strength or size. The NYPD, which can only enforce the laws within New York City, has a size of over 35,000 sworn officers. That's bigger than several countries' entire militaries. It all really depends on the size and budget of the city, town, or county. For example, LAPD has its own specialized SWAT team, but don't forget the city of LA has a population of nearly 4 million people. You're most likely not going to see a town of 50 people having the same level of SWAT team as the LAPD because one, there's no need, and two, there wouldn't be enough funding from 50 taxpayers to have a SWAT team to that degree. A small rural town in the middle of nowhere that has one police officer isn't going to have that officer trained in every aspect of SWAT, narcotics, detective work, explosives, and forensics. That cop will fit the needs of their community. Now, while we are only discussing county, city, and town police, there are in fact several other forms of local police that we won't get into for the sake of this video, such as school, campus, and transit police, but just know that they do exist. And no, mall cops, you still haven't made the cut. Now that we've given you a broad strokes breakdown of federal, state, and local police, let's go over some of their key similarities and differences. Make no mistake, while there's several different levels of law enforcement, they all do the same thing enforce the laws within the United States to maintain law and order. While a town cop might not have the federal jurisdiction that a federal agent has, if you break a federal law in their town, more likely than not they can enforce it. However, they'll be more concerned with violations of state law. Federal law enforcement agencies typically have their own specialties to tackle different realms of crime, like the DEA for drugs and ATF for guns, whereas the state police department will have departments within that agency to combat those sorts of crimes. Keep in mind that there is an overlap. The FBI makes arrests for guns and other crimes outside of its specialty, just as much as the DEA can make an arrest not having to do with drugs. All levels of law enforcement have some sort of SWAT component. Whether that's a hostage rescue team for the FBI, SORT for the New York State Police, or your local sheriff's office SWAT team, there are specialty units designed to respond to high-risk scenarios at virtually every level of law enforcement. Which brings us to our next point. Despite their differences, there are plenty of opportunities and instances where all levels of police work together. You can find town cops, county cops, and state cops embedded in a federal task force, like the JTTF for example. It can go further. State cops from different states may work together. City cops from different cities can work together. And the same goes with county cops and town cops. However, despite the cohesiveness, there are degrees of separation. Yes, county and city cops might 
might work together, but you won't see a county cop patrolling the city all willy-nilly. Typically, they will leave enforcement in the city to the city cops and only assist under certain circumstances. Cops will typically patrol in their designated areas. There's also no common standard for entering law enforcement across the board. While each department will have a set of minimum requirements for what they teach in their academies respective to their location, some departments might only require a high school diploma, whereas others might require a two-year college degree. When you start moving into the federal level, they start looking at four-year degrees for entry. There are also age restrictions too, and it gets much more detailed than that. In addition, depending on your area of focus, the training you receive will vary. For example, Parks Police will receive more training having to do with the geographical challenges of parks than a city cop will, but both will be trained to a standard for firearms. They'll all be peace officers capable of enforcing the law, just with different expertise and specialties. While one police academy may be three months long, another will be six months long. At the end of the day, they're still trained to do what needs to be done in the world of law enforcement. To sum this up, at the federal level, the standards of procedure are more uniform and predictable compared to state and local departments. You know what you're getting and what to expect, to a certain extent. It gets a bit tricky the more local you get. A county law enforcement agency in California isn't going to be identical to one in Massachusetts. There are nuances across every police department. Bottom line, the more local you look, the more differences you'll find. There's no one size fits all. The whole point of this video was to give you a basic understanding of how each of these three levels of law enforcement work. If you would like to learn more about law enforcement, such as the oldest federal law enforcement agency, the U.S. Marshals, you should go check out Mike Earp's captivating book on the U.S. Marshals. He gives an exclusive and fascinating behind-the-scenes look at the most storied law enforcement agency in America. And you can get this audiobook completely free today thanks to our sponsor for this video, Audible. If you want to check this book out, go to audibletrial.com slash general discharge. Audible is our favorite audiobook platform and offers a great way to take advantage of some downtime and transform it into productive time by learning and bettering yourself. Joining Audible gets you a free credit once a month that lets you get any title in their premium section regardless of price. Not only that, you get access to their Plus catalog, which gives you access to thousands of audiobooks and podcasts to listen to for free with your membership. So if there's something else besides the marshals that you're interested in learning, like other federal, state, or local police, Audible's definitely the right move for you. Again, if you go to audibletrial.com slash general discharge, you can get your first audiobook completely free, whether that be U.S. Marshals or whatever you're interested in. If you want to learn more about the various law enforcement agencies in the United States, we have a playlist just for you. Go check out our domestic agencies playlist in the description. Well, that is the down and dirty of federal, state, and local police. If you learned something from this video, make sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. As always, thank you for watching. Do you even want to be here? A big shout out to all of our YouTube members and our patrons over at our Patreon. Thank you all so much for taking the extra step in supporting our channel. It is much appreciated. If you'd like to be featured on a General Discharge video, consider joining our membership with the link in the description or the join button to the left of the subscribe button, or go give our Patreon a look and join the team. Here's Nick Nausea. All your friends are subscribing to General Discharge and you don't even want to be here.